Is AI coming for your job? When OpenAI released ChatGPT last November, it became apparent that it will have a profound impact on work. Late last month, OpenAI co-authored a study with top academics which addresses this existential question of whether AI will displace many workers. They found that almost 80% of jobs could be affected by AI in some way very soon. So today, I'm going to summarize this study and explain why you probably won't be losing your job to AI yet. Make no mistake, folks, you don't want to miss this one. The study I'll be summarizing today is titled, quote, GPTs are GPTs, an early look at the labor market impact potential of large language models. It was published to Cornell University's open source study website, Arvix, in mid-March, and I'll leave a link to the full study in the description if you're interested. Now, the study begins with a brief introduction, wherein the authors acknowledge that AI has been evolving exponentially over the last few years, specifically generative AI and large language models, or LLMs. They explain that generative pre-trained transformers, or GPTs, fall under the LLM umbrella. The authors also explain that generative AI refers to LLMs, which have the ability to generate text and code, including images and audio. They note that they will use GPTs and LLMs interchangeably throughout the study. I will note that I'll just refer to both as AI, unless I'm quoting the authors. Speaking of which, quote, LLMs can process and produce various forms of sequential data, including assembly language, protein sequences, and chess games extending beyond natural language applications alone. In other words, AI can do much more than just make images, videos, and text. The authors go on to explain that the impact of AI ultimately depends on its adoption and integration, which makes sense. AI could have the potential to replace everyone's job, but it wouldn't matter if the AI is unavailable or nobody knows how to use it. I reckon the learning alone will take some time. In any case, the authors then reveal their key finding, which I mentioned in the introduction. Quote, Our analysis indicates that approximately 19% of jobs have at least 50% of their tasks exposed when considering both current model capabilities and anticipated tools built upon them. Put simply, AI could do half of the workload for about 20% of jobs, which is truly disruptive. The authors also note that when you factor in other types of AI, this statistic could be as high as 50%. So, put differently, AI could do half of the workload for 50% of jobs, which means that 25% of all human jobs could be lost. The craziest part is that the authors found that the jobs which are most at risk of being disrupted by AI are those that pay the most. They note that this is contrary to what most people expected before AI went mainstream. The thinking went that AI would replace the lower-level jobs, not the higher-level ones. Obviously, the high-level jobs at risk are those that involve any kind of coding or writing. Conversely, any high-level jobs related to science and critical thinking are the least at risk. Obviously, jobs in industries like manufacturing, mining, agriculture, etc. are the least at risk overall due to the physical work involved. What's interesting is that the growth of AI apparently has no correlation with productivity growth. The authors believe this won't last for long, meaning that AI could make everyone and everything more productive. The outcome of this could potentially offset the job losses associated with AI in some way. Note that you can learn more about OpenAI, the creator of ChatGPT, using the link in the description. I digress. The second part of the study gives an overview of existing literature, i.e. existing research, about the subject. The authors start by reiterating that the evolution of AI has gone exponential over the last few years. They acknowledge that most AI is designed for specific tasks, but note that this is changing. The authors argue that the concerns around inaccuracies and bias in AI responses 
are largely irrelevant because eventually people will be able to customize AI to their liking. For example, someone could modify ChatGPT so that it gives them unfiltered answers to questions, which is what Reddit did with ChatGPT3. The authors explain that AI's ability to write computer code means that even people with no coding experience will have the capacity to create new kinds of AI and new use cases for it. This will add to the adoption and integration of AI. Of course, this will come with a long list of risks, including risks to jobs. The authors go on to repeat how most of the existing AI literature assumed that jobs with repetitive, low-skill tasks would be the first to be replaced by AI. Although it's clear this isn't the case, the authors say it's unlikely an AI will be able to do the entirety of any job. There will always be a need for human input. This relates to the third part of the study, which is the methodology. The authors used a dataset which includes information about over 1,000 different occupations. They specified that they analysed the impact of AI on over 19,000 general tasks and over 2,000 job-specific tasks. What's cool is the authors provide a small sample of the occupations and tasks in a table. The occupations listed include, quote, gambling cage workers, which I've honestly never heard of. Clearly, I've been living far too sheltered in existence. Now, the job-specific task these folks do is financial transactions, and the general tasks include cashing checks. This begs the question of how the authors assess the effects of AI on these general and specific tasks. The answer is, if an AI can, quote, reduce the time required for a human to perform a specific task or complete a general task by at least 50%. They refer to this benchmark as, quote, exposure. The authors then outline the three possible effects that AI could have on a job. The first is no exposure, aka no effect. The second is direct exposure, i.e. 50% or more. And the third is indirect exposure, i.e. less than 50%. The authors admit that the 50% threshold is arbitrary and chosen for simplicity. Now, if I understand correctly, the authors asked human participants if job-related tasks could be done by AI and also used ChatGPT to see if it could perform the job-related tasks. What's wild is that the human estimates aligned with ChatGPT's abilities, though it seems that the authors adjusted ChatGPT's responses. Alternatively, it could be because the human participants in the study happen to be experts in AI. The authors note this as one of the limitations of the study. They admit that AI experts may not have the best understanding of just how much AI could impact, say, jobs which require you to work physically. This ties into the fourth part of the study, which is the detailed results. The authors commence by conceding that they can't possibly know for sure how AI will affect jobs. They also concede that they can't possibly model the impacts that AI could have on other factors which could in turn affect jobs. With that said, they state, quote, Our findings suggest that, based on their task-level capabilities, LLMs have the potential to significantly affect a diverse range of occupations within the US economy, demonstrating a key attribute of general-purpose technologies. In other words, no job is safe. The authors then break down their findings with a series of statistics. For starters, 15% of tasks in any job could be replaced by AI on average. Again, 50% of tasks in 20% of jobs could be replaced by AI. For the remaining 80% of jobs, only 10% of associated tasks could be replaced by AI. The authors provide an important caveat, however. First off, it's likely that most of the tasks done by AI will still require human oversight. Logically, as AI gets better, there will be a decreasing need for this human oversight, but the authors believe that humans will simultaneously learn how to use AI better. In terms of the skills that will be harder for AI to replace, you'll recall that science and critical thinking are not very exposed to AI, whereas programming and writing are. What's frustrating is 
that the authors don't specify exactly which jobs would be safe from AI. They only explain which ones are at risk later. For what it's worth, the authors break down things by job zone. Now, this taxonomy was developed by the same team which created the dataset used in the study. Job zones basically tell you how long it takes to prepare someone for a job, including previous education. Job zones range from 1 to 5. Naturally, jobs in zone 1 require the least preparation, and jobs in zone 5 require the most preparation. What's shocking is that jobs in zone 1 are not exposed at all to AI. Jobs in zone 2 have 6% exposure. For zone 3, it's over 10%. For zone 4, it's over 34%. And zone 5, it's over 26%. In short, the more advanced the job, the more likely it is to be disrupted by AI. In the words of the authors, quote, Our analysis suggests that individuals holding bachelor's, master's, and professional degrees are more exposed to LLMs than those without formal education credentials. I suspect this has to do with the types of degrees that people are getting these days, but let's not go there. Now, when it comes to which jobs will be the most affected by AI, the authors are kind enough to provide a list of occupations that was put together both by human participants and by ChatGPT. There's quite a bit of overlap, and here's the full list. Interpreters and translators, survey researchers, poets, lyricists, and creative writers, animal scientists, public relations specialists, writers and authors, mathematicians, tax preparers, financial quantitative analysts, web and digital interface designers, correspondence clerks, blockchain engineers, court reporters and simultaneous captioners, accountants and auditors, news analysts, reporters and journalists, legal secretaries and administrative assistants, clinical data managers, and climate change policy analysts. Now, if I understand correctly, this is an incomplete list of over 80 occupations. To be clear, this doesn't mean that AI is going to replace all these jobs. It just means that AI will be able to do most of the tasks associated with them. In the words of the authors, quote, Occupations listed in this table are those where we estimate that GPTs and GPT-powered software are able to save workers a significant amount of time completing a large share of their tasks, but it does not necessarily suggest that their tasks can be fully automated by these technologies. Now, if you think this is all BS, the authors fact-check themselves by comparing their results to similar studies. Lo and behold, it all checks out. They even go as far as to explain why some comparable studies didn't show the same results, presumably implying that the findings of this study are in fact accurate. The authors expand on their results in the fifth part of the study, which is the discussion. They discuss how the adoption of AI has risen as exponentially as its development ever since ChatGPT was released. As a fun fact, the chatbot now holds the record for the fastest rate of tech adoption in history, with over 100 million users. The authors accurately point out that, quote, the adoption of LLMs will vary across different economic sectors due to factors such as data availability, regulatory environment, and the distribution of power and interests. Note that Italy recently became the first country to ban ChatGPT over privacy concerns. Regarding AI's implications on American policy, the authors caution that the growth of AI is going to lead to massive economic disparities that could call for more social safety nets, aka universal basic income. They dare not admit that this disparity will be between the technological elites and everyone else. On that note, the authors highlight the fact that the study had many limitations, including the aforementioned one about the human participants all being AI experts. They also recommend that future researchers consider the impact of AI on jobs when it's able to see and identify things like we can. The final part of the study is the conclusion, wherein the authors restate the statistics you'll all be familiar with by now. The only one they highlight is, quote, 19% of jobs have at least 50% of their tasks exposed to LLMs when considering both current model capabilities and anticipated LLM-powered software. 
They also restate an important point you may also recall. Quote, While the technical capacity for LLMs to make human labor more efficient appears evident, it is important to recognize that social, economic, regulatory, and other factors will influence actual labor productivity outcomes. So, this brings me to why you won't be losing your job to AI anytime soon. The short explanation is that AI is currently incapable of telling us the truth about ourselves as individuals and ourselves as a species. This is because AI was designed not to do that, and I don't think that'll be changing anytime soon. What this means is that AI will continue to be used as nothing more than a tool for the foreseeable future. As both the study and common sense suggest, incorporating AI into workflows is likely to result in increased productivity and probably even increased pay until more people learn how to use AI. This is where the problems could begin, however, because I have a feeling that people are going to overestimate just how well AI can do certain tasks. For instance, a software developer could start letting ChatGPT write most of his or her code and then over time become lazy about checking it for accuracy. This could have devastating consequences for the economy and possibly even for the whole planet. Consider a scenario where governments start using AI as part of their climate policy, as the authors alluded to. The AI could accidentally draft a policy that's damaging to the planet and to people. However, this all assumes that governments will allow AI to continue evolving unchecked. I believe that's extremely unlikely for two reasons. First, governments will not want every individual and institution to have access to AI. This would create too much of a risk to their power in their eyes, and rightfully so. As such, we're likely to see severe restrictions on the use of AI, possibly to the point that only governments and a handful of selected entities are allowed to use it. It will not surprise me in the slightest if we see countries follow Italy's lead in banning these AIs until these exceptions are set up. The second reason why governments will not allow AI to continue evolving unchecked is because it is too deflationary. Now, for context, deflation is very bad when you have lots of debt. Almost every government has massive amounts of debt that it can't repay and has been trying to inflate away. If AI becomes truly integrated within the economy, then everything would gradually become cheaper. That's because it would take less time, less money, and less effort to produce the same output. This would result in widespread deflation, which would result in debt gradually becoming more expensive. And when debts become more expensive, entities with lots of debt, such as governments and the elites, would eventually default and lose everything. Now, call me crazy, but I don't think they're going to allow that to happen. That means they're going to keep AI under control so it doesn't cause too much deflation. Then again, if they succeed in rolling out their central bank digital currencies or CBDCs, they could continue keeping inflation artificially high even though the economy is actually deflationary due to AI. And they wouldn't even have to pull the levers of this dystopian digital currency system either. They'd let AI do it. You can learn more about how far along governments are with their CBDCs using the link in the description. And that is all for today's video. If you found it informative, smash that like button to let me know. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel and ping that notification bell so you don't miss the next one. Better yet, share this video with your friends and family so that they're informed too. And if you happen to be into crypto, I have got thousands of dollars worth of discounts on hardware wallets, trading bots, and trading fees on top cryptocurrency exchanges. You can get a load of those by checking out the deals page in the description. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time. My name is Guy, and you have been watching Coin Bureau.